those. Yeah, good. Hola, hola. Hey, hola. Hola. Lo siento mucho. I'm very, very sorry. I am a minute late. I am a minute late getting on here. It's uh, okay. No, I problem. Pipes. This is not fun. I just got off with the plumber. Yay. Oh, no. Okay, it's one of those things. What happened? Shall I start class at exactly 930? Or shall I lose even more gallons of water through the pipes under my yeah. house? You should, oh, do you need to cancel class Maryland. today? Yeah, we yeah we well we I've got a guy he can't get here to well we we have some things turned off. Okay, so mm -hmm. yes, um, when you can hear water running through your house like all the time, it's, oh, it's that's not good. Bad sign. Okay, <clears throat> Benny, enough. Can of they cut cut class short today, Marilyn? No, no, they can't come out till Wednesday. So we we've got enough done for now. Wednesday. <laughs> My name, bueno, okay. Um, so today is going to be, I, I think, actually kind of a hybrid, just some different things. And it'll depend on uh, how much time we spend on which things will depend on what kind of questions you have, um, which is totally, totally fun. I do want to do a last, last uh, uh, practice bit. This It'll be kind of an Im impromptu uh, kind of working with reflexives, but <clears throat> we'll we'll pick a little from here and from there on uh, just different things that you did for homework as well. I do want to ask um, if you have whoop, any questions on the possessive pages that I sent you. Some of you may have done them, some of you may not have, depending on what you needed. I sent two uh pages on uh um quizzing yourself on you know yeah i your me me stu, tu, mm -hmm. su, 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 any questions there yet left hanging over or not i didn't have any questions but i wanted to say mm -hmm. that i really like that first site i can't remember the name of it i will show yeah. it yeah, yeah. yeah i think I Actually, just, I'm glad were... you said, you've sent things from there before and I, yes. Mm -hmm. There were two, all... this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, okay. The whole site, I think, is nice. And and you had sent things okay. before and mm -hmm. I'd forgotten. So, so it was a good reminder that yeah. it, this is a good reinforcement tool. Okay. I'm, I'm glad to hear that feedback because sometimes it's hard to know. Uh, and, you know, they had a nice little... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, run down. So, you know, the prompts here in parentheses were for telling you, uh, you know, the two was a prompt for your kids. The ella was a prompt for her mom. Yeah. Who the, the parentheses is who we're referring to as owning something. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the yo in number. Uh, oh, wow. These are numbered incorrectly. Why did that happen? Anyway, um, Okay, I'm glad that that worked. Yeah, and I, yes. I got a hundred percent the I second did. time I did it. <laughs> got it again. Okay, the first time I only got eight. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Progress. We got to look at progress. That's what's important. Um, more again, Mali. Um, the other thing, uh. I would like to check on because I, I want to take kind of the the shorty things first. Uh, uh, where did my link go? Ah, aquí está. Here it is. Uh, we had a question, and so I, I'm trying to take the little short things first and then dive into um, other stuff that will take a little bit longer. Uh, okay. Yeah. We yeah. had a question on, so, oh, perdón, sí, Liz, Liza, sí. Well, I, I don't want to throw a, a ranch in anything, but um, <laughs> um, I was just thinking of, you know, when the when you go Seuss and then there's a plural. There's a plural. Su well, Seuss right. is plural. There's Sue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Sue. And Seuss. Well, when there's like a plural, um, not adjective, maybe, maybe I'm thinking of adjective. 
Every, um, okay. I've gone on the subject. So I is think. your question like, why is Seuss instead of Sue? Um, okay, I'll go there. I'm not totally sure what my question is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> with, with possessives, mm -hmm. actually, you mentioned that word adjectives. Adjectives are just words that describe nouns. So, you know, uh, un sweater azul. Azul is an adjective because it tells me the color of this. See? Um, mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, un sweater cómodo, a comfortable sweater. Comfortable just tells it's an adjective because it talks about anything that describes what this thing on me is, right? Um, possessives, you should look at it at as they're all they are is adjectives. So that means for the form, they have to look at the thing that they're talking about. It's just that instead of azul, blue, or cómodo, comfortable, it's just telling you ownership, but it has to look at the item that is uh, the item to get its form. So her sweater would only be one sweater. Okay, so it right, was done so sweater. But the me here, here's the twist. Nuestro, nuestra, nuestros, nuestras. Those get gender, but me, tu, su, don't get gender. So they no. kind of break that rule. You're used to, well, we always have gender in Spanish, uh, uh, which will happen with adjectives because they look, you know, they, they talk about a thing and the thing determines, you know, that gender. But for the me, tu, su words, they have no gender. So all you worry about is the singular plural. Okay. So here's where it gets like funky and weird and kind of clumped up. So because, because it has no gender, uh, that, that suit word can mean his, can mean her, can mean their, belonging to a bunch of guys, can mean their, belonging to a bunch of gals, can mean your, the formal your. It can mean all those things. So out of context, out just as an isolated sentence standing alone, you won't know who Sue belongs to without some prior conversation, right? I have to be talking about, ah, mi hija compra mucha ropa nueva. Uh, su suéter nuevo es uh, rojo. And then I know it's her sweater because I'm talking about mi hija. But without that contextual, you know, without weaving it through the whole set of sentences and the conversation, just with the word su by itself or just with the word sus by itself, you won't know who it's talking about unless you have the context of a, a, a conversation. See? Okay, I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> and that, there, I mean, there are a lot of of sites that will tell you things like, well, they'll say su suéter de ella, but you don't really hear people doing that. You don't. Go sus. Uh, yeah, sus. May yeah. Okay, so. In English, here's the other complicating thing. We're used to in English, we think of the word there as plural. Oh, because it talks about, you know, a bunch of people owning something, right? Mm -hmm. But if I say their car, right, who it belongs to is a bunch of people, right? But right. the car that's owned is only one item, right? right? So that we think of that word in, we think in English... <laughs> that word there is plural, right? Uh, but the thing it's talking about is just one car. Well, in Spanish, you've got to kind of flip that around. Uh, uh, su, yeah. su can mean there. Su carro, su carro can mean their car. Yes. Meaning it, that word su is indicating there's a group of people who own it. Yes. Yet it's only su, not sus. Right. So that word sus 
won't necessarily look at, oh, there, it's a bunch of people. It always has to be sus. No. So I can't have something like this. Sus carro, their car. Thinking, oh, there means a whole bunch of people. It must be sus, plural. No. What that word su looks at is the object that is owned. Just like all other adjectives, look at the object they're talking about, the thing or the person that they're talking about. So our notion of possessive in English is a mix of who the owner is, yeah? And, and, and wow, it's one of the few things in English that talks about gender. Her car, yeah. her is gendered in English. Mm -hmm. But oddly, her in Spanish is not gendered. It's just su. <laughs> su carro can mean their car, belongs to a whole bunch of people. Su carro can mean her car, it belongs to one gal. Su carro can mean his car. Belong su carro can even be, respectfully, your car. If you're talking to somebody that you're not on a first name basis with. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's. Uh, I'll send you a little more material on that. For for you. Okay. Jane? Thank you. Jane? Maybe I just missed um, something. It's something you just have to let sink in. That word suit looks at the object that is owned. And therefore, if that object is a onesie item, it'll be a singular word, right? The only thing where you worry about gender is that nuestro word. I mean, if you were in Spain, you would have that vuestro, the you guys, your, but we don't use that in Latin America and Spanish, so you don't have to, we take that one out of the, the mix. Okay? See? Okay, thank you. I okay, I'll send you a little bit it. more about that. See, sí, bien. Okay, uh, let's take our other little hangnail item, our little hangnail item, because it's not worthy of a whole class. It's the shorty, shorty thing. Is this thing of, whoa, what about solamente and solo, solamente and solo? Fortunately for you guys, since 2010, this got easier because it used to be solamente, solo with an accent mark, solo with no accent mark. Huh? What, what for? Yeah. The... Real Academia Española, the, the, the bunch of old guys that make up the rules literally for the language, <laughs> decided in 2010, we're going to get rid of the accent mark on solo. It used to be when I was in school, it was this was a thing of the nun will wrap you on the, your fingers with the ruler for getting this wrong. There used to be a version of solo with an accent mark and without. That has been taken out of the mix. So older people in their writing will forget about that and will just do it out of habit, but it's not supposed to be done anymore. Uh, so, okay, we have that complication gone. Now it's only solo, no accent mark, just solo. Um, solamente is an adverb because it's got a mente on it which is usually a Lee word, rapidamente, quickly, lentamente, slowly, fuertemente, strongly, or could be loudly. Uh, so mente is always for adverbs. Um, but the good news about this is that it's less complicated than it used to be. Solo is, uh, okay, you don't really, here's what you need to know. Solamente with the mente can only function as an adverb, meaning it ta it's talking about an action. Adverbs talk about verbs, how an action is done. So solamente means only when it's used in an adverb form. So solamente tengo un coche. I only have one car, meaning I don't have like two or three cars. I've just got one. Solamente tengo. Solamente is an adverb for the verb tengo. Uh, and uh, another example of that is we may translate it into the English idea of just. Es solamente un niño. He's just a child. You could also say he's only a child. So this only could be also be plugged into this B definition. 
es solamente un niño, he's just a child. But the key is that the solamente is looking at the verb. It's talking about the verb. And here, the verb is just es. In the A example, the verb is tengo. So, solamente tengo un a coche. Es solamente un niño. All right. So, only. But solo can often do that same job. It's got kind of two jobs. The word solo has kind of two jobs. Um, it can be used actually to talk about uh, uh, a verb in this only or just sense. And it can also be an adjective uh, alone as an unaccompanied, meaning you're by yourself. Me da miedo estar solo en la oscuridad. It scares me to be alone in the dark. So solo can mean alone. Solo can mean on one's own, which means alone. <laughs> ¿Prefieres ver películas sola o con amigos? And now we know we're talking to a lady because it turned into sola, feminine form. Do you prefer to watch movies on your own, meaning by yourself? Solo can mean by yourself. Yeah, and we've got that C example there. Uh, by oneself. Quiero la hamburguesa sola, sin pan. I want the burger by itself, without a bun. Meaning, just the burger, no bun, thanks. Okay? So, in all of these situations here on the right, the idea of alone, on your own, by yourself, uh, uh, on one's own, they're talking about people, not verbs. And that's why it uses the word solo. And that's why uh, it changed to a feminine form there. It was talking about a lady. Uh, solo can also mean lonesome, lonely. Me sentía muy sola. I felt very alone. Me sentía muy sola cuando llegué a Tokio por primera vez. I felt very lonely when I arrived in Tokio for the first time. Okay, so there we go. Ah, oh, it can mean single, as in soul, which or that word soul comes from solo. Uh, it goes back to the old, old root. Uh, este cuarto tiene un solo closet. This room has one single closet closet. And we're just emphasizing that there's not more than one closet. It's just one. Okay. A single, a onesie. Solo can mean black, only talking about coffee. Ah. Who knew? Tomaré un café solo. So here's what you should know about this solo. Café solo means what we think of in English as black coffee. No sugar, no cream. If you want to say no sugar, no cream, café solo. Okay? Café solo. So think of that one definitely as a chunk. Because you'll only hear it talking about black. You'll never use solo to say a black car <laughs> or black gloves. Never, never. Café solo. That's the only way you can use that. Okay? But look here. Solo can be a substitute for this word solamente. It frequently also gets used not only as an adjective talking about a thing, but it also can be used to talk about a, a verb. And that means it goes into adverb, oops, it goes into adverb function. Solo can also be used the same way we use solamente. Yay, a shorter word. So, solo hay un problema. There is only one problem. And that solo is really pairing up with the verb hay. So, I can say solamente hay un problema or solo hay un problema. No diff. No difference. I can go either way on that, okay? Uh, 
solo, solo haz lo que te digo. Just do what I tell you. Only do what I say. And that solo is looking at the word as, which is a verb. It's a command verb. It's a verb that's in a command form. That verb, as, H-A-Z, comes from hacer, to make, to do. And it's just the command, the friendly command form of hacer. Okay. So that's why it looks kind of weird to you because it's an irregular command form. Solo haz lo que te digo. Just, just do what I tell you. Okay. Bien. Um, and it can mean a solo in a musical sense as well. Okay. Like, you know, a piano solo, all of that sort of thing. So we had that question last week about, uh, uh, solo and solamente and you know the the difference is that solo can talk about it now it can also be used as a substitute for solamente right uh, solo tengo un libro solo tengo un micrófono I only have one microphone solo tengo un micrófono see uh, uh Solo puedo usar eh, eh, el agua fría. I can only use the cold water in my house today. <laughs> Solo puedo usar el agua fría. I can only use the cold water. Uh, so, so uh, Marilyn, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll admit I thought I understood this until it sounded like the last five or six examples you gave us, you were using solo as an adverb and it doesn't seem I, I i guess i'm fishing for a rule of when like you just said solo tango uh, solo can be used instead of so solamente okay there is no difference between using those two okay okay but solo can also be used to talk because and in that sense solo and solamente are acting as adverbs. They'll be paired with a verb, an action. Okay. Uh, solo corro por las mañanas. I only run in the mornings. And it's talking about running. Uh, uh, solo, uh, uh, solo cocino con aceite de oliva. I only cook with olive oil. And it's talking about that action of cooking, solo cocino. That doesn't sound like as a looking for simplification here. It doesn't well, sound like there's a lot of reason to use solamente. There, there, well, there are a lot of reasons for using solo, but only one reason for using solamente. So I can say solamente cocino con aceite de oliva. Solamente cocino, I only cook. I can also say solo cocino. There, solo and solamente can be used flip-flop equivalently either way when you're doing when you're in adverb mode when you're using it to talk about a verb and action okay but if i'm talking about an item that is or a person who is alone or an item that is a, a single item then it's got to go to that solo word and then it will look at gender. Ella está sola. Oh, she's alone. Ella está sola. She's all alone. A lot of people use like to use solita. Estoy aquí muy solita. I am here all by myself. All by my little self, solita. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, solo, which goes into gender. Sola, solo, solas is is an ad uh, adjective it'll talk about a person or a thing solo can also be a substitute for solamente i'll, so, and I'll send you that page so basically what i'm hearing and what i think mark was asking is this really no good reason to use solamente because you can use solo for everything, and solo is easier to say and spell. It's a, a, it, it's easier for you to say, but you know you have to know that people will use solamente. Which one will they use? Is solamente right. more frequent than solo? No. 
people might say, uh, uh, me gusta solo, uh, 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 me gusta solo eh, la, la carne de res. I only like beef. Me gusta solo. Me gusta solamente. Same thing. I just chose to use the word solamente instead of solo. So they're equivalent. And people will flip-flop between the two as they feel like. Just as we can flip-flop and say, I like only red meat or I like just red meat. And we can flip-flop only or just. That's the way you should think of it. They can flip-flop talking about an action between solo and solamente. See? But if we're using solo to mean the idea of just uh, an, an item, right? Not just running or just cooking or only cooking or only running. Not about the verb, but about a noun. Then it's got to go into that solo form. Uh, and I'll send you that page because the examples there show you how that, that does a flip-flop. And actually, there's a second page that talks about it too, but it's a longer read, longer read, which, uh, okay. You know what? I'll show you a portion of the page and I'll give you the link for this. So this shows you, we it's kind of uh, tough to read. That's small. Let's see if we can make this bigger. Oh, see, mejor, better. Here we go. Here you see the flip-flop. Either word is okay. Solo nos quedan 10 pesos. We only have 10 pesos left. Or solamente nos quedan 10 pesos. Solo or solamente, you can flip-flop and use either one because we're talking about what we have left over. It's talking about the verb part of that sentence. Solo nos quedan 10 pesos. Solamente nos quedan 10 pesos. There's no difference. Mi mamá vino sola, uh, uh, solo para quejarse. My mom came just to complain. <laughs> she doesn't come for fun. She doesn't come to do anything nice. She just comes to complain. Mi mamá vino solo para quejarse. But somebody might flip-flop and choose to use solamente instead. It means the same thing. Mi mamá vino solamente para que que quejarse. Those two terms, solo or solamente, are talking about uh, why she came, the action. So I can flip-flop and use either one of those words, either solo or solamente. Makes no difference. Uh, te creo que... Uh, no te creo que solo quieras esto. I don't believe you only want this. That's kind of a more uh, uh, complicated structure. But, you know... If you're saying the idea of only or just talking about an action, I can use either solo or solamente, and they're both correct. They're equivalent terms. Okay. Bien. If we're using the word solo to talk about a person, Déjame solo, leave me alone, and the person is alone, yeah? Now it's that word solo is acting as an adjective. A woman saying, leave me alone, she is alone. <laughs> alone is describing her state. It'll be déjame sola. Yeah? But this is the word solo or sola acting in with its adjective hat on, if you will, acting as an adjective. Here, the word solo or its feminine form sola is talking about a person or an item. Yeah. Uh, so what you should know, what's the takeaway? If you're talking about an action, that means we're in adverb mode. It's wearing an adverb hat. You can flip-flop between solo and solamente, and it makes no diff. Okay? 
I only have to go to that solo word to say just or only when I'm talking about a thing or a person, right? That mente has to come off. The mente is an adverb thing. Okay. Okay. Vale. I'll send you those two links. If you want to read the whole thing, it's kind of a long involved thing and it's going to talk about how they took away the accent mark and you don't really need to read that whole part, but yeah. Um, so that is something where there is always flexibility. Bien. And the flexibility is there in English because honestly, you know, we say, only or just all the time in English. And we do flip-flops with words too, where we have equivalents. Vale, buena. Okay, I want to move on and see if you have any questions on, on the video we had. And this video was ostensibly about clothing. <laughs> Uh, but, um, you know, ir de compras, ir de compras. And he probably, uh, he probably speaks a little bit faster than what you're used to, but he went very slowly through. Uh, and you've seen, you've heard in this video, he used a lot of verbs that you've been using in this session, uh, like, Tener to talk about what kind of clothes he has or what kind of clothes the store has. Tener, right? To he used I, there is or there are, to talk about what kind of clothing is sitting in his closet and what kind of clothing there is in the store. Yeah. Uh, he used uh, 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 llevar and quedar to talk about clothing. He used probarse to try on, uh, trying on clothing. So I just want to know if you have any questions about anything in that video, any turn of phrase, any vocabulary, anything that was puzzling to you, or did most of that make sense? Most of it was um, good. I just um, was wondering about the Kiera a little bit. Um, I'm sorry, you're wondering about what the... Oh, the Kiera. Ah, the Quiero but, verb. Yes. Um, the I the, want. Uh, what question do you have about Quiero? Oh, he went through a number of... Oh, and look, we had a solo. Hmm. We're in a... Solo quería dar. Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. Solo about. quería dar un vistazo. Solo quería echar un vistazo. I was just looking and look. Solo quería. I just wanted. That quería is a past for querer. I only wanted to look. Right when the guy asks you, "Do you want help?" and you say, "No, just looking." There are different ways people may say just looking. Solo quería. Echar un vistazo, that's the just looking around, right? Uh, estaba solo uh, mirando. I was just looking. And there's Soleil. Sí, Cindy. I, I was going to ask you about the dar in there. I only wanted to look. I see mir uh, mirando on the other side, but solo quería dar. I solo only want sí. to give. So, quería... Dar un vistazo or echar un vistazo. Give or throw. Echar means throw and dar means give. And I only wanted to give a look. That's the way they say. Give a look. look. Yeah. Okay. Either one of these verbs, either dar or echar can be used there. Okay, thank you. And vistazo comes from that word we know as vista, you know, hasta la vista. Till I see you again. It comes from that bad verb, ultimately. But dar un vistazo, echar un vistazo means have a look. And it's casual. Not studying closely. 
you know, at, if you're studying something super closely and you're reading every single word to make sure you get it right, because it's a medical document or a legal document, it won't be dar un vistazo. That means just take a glance, take a look. These are two idiomatic uh, uh, phrases that are used for take a look. And you also know the verb mirar. Mirar to mean, right, to look at something. So these are just two different ways of telling the, the, the clerk, el dependiente, the clerk, that you're just looking. Estaba solo mirando. I was just looking. Or solo quería dar un vistazo. Solo quería echar un vistazo. Now there they've got the verbs in past, but they can be present too. Like I am just looking, right? What he has on the screen there is I was just looking. If you want to say I am just looking, you just put querer in present. Solo, uh, uh, solo quiero dar un vistazo. Solo quiero echar un vistazo. So that verb querer could be present, could be past. People flip between those. I am just looking. I was just looking. That's all it means, right? So, solo quiero dar un chazo o estoy solo mirando, right? On the right side, under in the red uh, uh, flag there, la etiqueta, the little tab. Uh, estoy solo mirando puts estar into present, right? Estoy solo mirando. I am just looking. And he's just got it there in that red tab that you see in the past. Estaba solo mirando. I was just looking. That's all that means. Marilyn? Sí. Marilyn? Sí. Question, because the way he explained it, it sounded like you wouldn't want to use um, conjugate carar in the present tense because you were being very forceful. Ah, uh. I'll and flip it was to that. Lighter to say Korea. And and this one you have to listen to his voice. Okay. This is actually worth turning on for the video portion. How you use querer to say I want something can sometimes make a difference in how he uses the word exigente, how demanding you sound. Okay, and now we're talking in a store setting, mind you. So if you're in a, in any kind of a setting where somebody is giving you service, yeah, in a store, in an office, uh, in a restaurant, this could be uh, all the same kind of situation where somebody is waiting on you. Es muy útil. Puedes decir quiero, quería o quisiera. Ah. If you're telling a un dependiente, if you're telling a clerk or a person in an office or a waiter in a restaurant that you want something, you might use quiero or quería or quisiera, quisiera, quisiera. And what, how he conveys the idea of quisiera when he gets into quisiera examples is he uses this kind of voice. You know, when the person like, I'm afraid to ask for this, I am, I got no spine. <laughs> you know, that sounds like I got no spine. I can't just speak up for myself and say, gee, I'd like this. Could I please? That whiny, that's quisiera. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he does that whiny voice to give you the idea that quisiera is used if you are just you are being the politest of polite, but it mm -hmm. does come across that verb conjugation comes across as the politest of the most polite. It's like, it's the icing on the cake. It's the top level of being super polite. So you really only use it in a formal kind of setting, or if you really want to emphasize and be super soft pedal. Okay, so. La diferencia principal es que quiero es un, es un poco más directo. And suena más exigente means it sounds more demanding. Quiero un café solo. I want a black coffee. And it's like, 
you know, the old dragnet show, just the facts, ma'am. The old, old uh, a detective would come in, just the facts, ma'am, no details. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that's quiero. It comes off as being kind of brief. It doesn't necessarily mean you're being pushy or nasty or mean. No, you shouldn't get that idea either. But it does come across as more direct, meaning you're getting right to the point. Okay, so just know that. Uh, vale, un poco más asertivo. A veces uh, more assertive. Quiero the present tense of want is seen as more assertive. Whether you're ordering a coffee or you're looking for that special jacket and it just has to be just so. Okay. Pue, puede sonar un poco exigente. Quiero comprar, quiero comprar este, este cinturón. Quiero I want to buy this belt. Comprar este <laughs> I'm being assertive. He's going into assertive voice. He is just getting, uh, you know, he's kind of going <laughs> off the chart with the assertiveness level. Quiero is more assertive. It's just down to the brass tax, the facts, and you're being short and you're getting right, you're cutting right to the chase. And I want to do this and I want to get out of the store as fast as I possibly can. That's quiero. Cinturón. Si quieres, si quieres ser un poco más indirecto. If you want to be a little more indirect. No, no parecer, no parecer demasiado exigente. If you don't want to be quite so pushy. Un poquito más educado, quizás. Entonces, Maybe puedes a little... usar el imperfecto y decir, quería. Quería technically is wanted. Oh, I wanted this belt. And it's just a little bit softer when we put it in the past to ask a request. Quería. Quería comprar este. I wanted to buy this one. All right? And it's just being a little softer vale quería, little less demanding quería comprar estos calcetines quería oh, i wanted to buy these socks quería comprar estos calcetines i wanted to buy quería comprar quiero comprar i want to do this and then i want to get the heck out of the store as fast as i can let's do it let's get it done right quería oh i wanted if you feel like doing that if you're in a busy, here's here's a cue, because context is king. It's December 23rd, and the store is full of people, and you got four people in line behind you. You're probably saying, quiero comprar, I want to buy this. And you're, you're getting it done and getting out because there's a whole bunch of people behind you in line, right? You got a lot of time. There's nobody else in the store. It doesn't matter how fast you're going. You're shopping for fun, but you're not in a hurry. You might want to use quería. Oh, I just wanted to do this. That's the only difference he's talking about. Comprar este par de, de calcetines. ¿eh? Quería, quería comprar estos calcetines. I wanted to buy si, these. Si quieres hats. ser incluso más indirecto, sonar, sonar aún menos exigente. Now, if you want to be like the ultimate and not pushy. Entonces, entonces puedes decir, puedes decir, quisiera, yo quisiera. Eh, yo... Quisiera <laughs> is, is uh, uh, sounds almost submissive. It is so polite. It is like the super polite. When he says educado, it sounds like he's saying educated, but it means polite. Educado means courteous, polite. If you want to be like the super most polite, then it's quisiera. So, quisiera un café solo. Ah, I would like, please, if you have time and if you I, can, yeah. and if and, it's convenient and if it's not too much trouble, that's quisiera. So you really only use quisiera in a, a, a quite formal situation. If you're at a sit down dinner, a very elegant white tablecloth, Real silver, crystal, quisiera might be totally appropriate because it's a very fancy setting. But if you just want a cup of joe and there are five people behind you, use quiero.
because it's like fast and get it done. And now I'm out of here, right? But quisiera is sit down, formal. The waiter's got the little, you know, the little thing over his sleeve when he's serving the wine, the little white cloth. It's that. Quisiera is super formal, super polite, formal situations. That's the difference between quiero, quería, and quisiera. If you go to a fast food, if you're in a fast food setting, quisiera, quisiera dos tacos, por, por favor, sounds kind of, may I have two tacos, please, if it's not too much trouble. <laughs> too, it's too much. It's over the top. Yeah. Si? Sí? Bien? Does that clear that up? Si. Sí. Gracias. Yeah. Quiero is a special verb that 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 has these three forms that is used a lot in service settings. Yeah. If you're asking the tax guy for an extension of three months, maybe use quisiera because mm -hmm. you want to be really nice and you want to get that three month tax extension. <laughs> but you want to just sign a check and get out of there. Quiero is good enough. Bien. Yeah. But you may hear people using any of those terms, and those are all forms of quiero, and you don't have to memorize like a lot of charts for that, right? Quería is a little more leisurely, a little more uh, uh, softer, and quisiera is super polite, off the charts, off the scale, super polite. Bien? Bien. Okay. Ah, bien. Okay. So, uh, which, which term you use, quiero, quería, quisiera, depends on your personal situation and the time available and the setting and all of that. See, ¿Sí? bien. Okay. Uh, I anticipated that that was going to be a question because that, that is a common Common thread he had running through a lot of his examples there. But he used a lot of verbs that we use in store settings, like probarse, try stuff on, tener, have certain, uh, uh, certain inventory available. I also talking about the inventory available, but uh, I is the impersonal verb versus tener, you know, do you have something? Uh, those were all useful. Okay. Bien. Bueno. Bien. Good. Can we move it on from there? Sí. 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 Vale. Perfecto. Perfecto. Uh, okay. And some of the takeaway of that is that, you know, you will hear all those terms used in a store. So it's good to know what, uh, you know, what he's referring to. Um, okay, so since he had some phrases in there that were, uh, he had probarse, which is reflexive, I want to do one last shout out exercise uh, with reflexives and see if you've got the idea of reflexives down. Uh, reflexives mean that we're pairing up a reflexive pronoun like me, te, se, or nos, with a verb that matches it in form. So me only goes with yo verbs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, me llamo Marilyn. Me llamo Marilyn. My name is me llamo. I call myself, literally. Uh, and llamo, the yo form, has to have me, right? The reflexives mean that the pronoun matches up a me pronoun with a yo verb, right? Como te llamas? Como te llamas? What's your name? Te has to match up with a tu <coughs> verb. So the verb will be using the same kind of pronoun. They have to be in a matching kind of pronoun. Se, como se llama? Como se llama? Uh, su esposo o su esposa. What's your husband or wife's name? Uh, como se llaman? Uh, tus hijos. What are your kids' names? See, ¿Sí? bien. Um, so 
reflexive means that uh, we match up a pronoun and pronoun with the verb form. And sometimes you just have to get used to some verbs are just reflexive and they won't be the standard, oh, me levanto, I'm getting up, me siento, I'm sitting myself down. We introduce reflexives as you do the action and you receive the action. But some verbs in Spanish just are reflexive. And you just have to get used to that. And it is a slow process and it takes time. So we're just going to uh, use some verbs. You know these are reflexive because I give them to you as reflexive. And we're going to see if we can conjugate these. I'm going to try to make this bigger. Si, buen grande ser. Ah, mucho mejor. Es más fácil. ¿Qué hacen estas personas? What are these people doing? So we're going to see if you can get the verb conjugated right for the person we're going to talk about. Lastimarse means to hurt yourself, to injure yourself, okay? By accident, of course. Uh, oh, and I have to change this to an ella because I've got a lady pictured here. Como se dice, oh, she's hurting herself. She, She's falling down here. Ella? Mm -hmm. How do we take this and change it to say that this is happening to her? Ella se lastima. Ella se lastima, sí. Ella se lastima. And usually we use this in a past thing, right? Uh, ella se lastimó. She hurt herself. So know that you'll hear that in past, but yeah. Uh, olvidarse de, to forget about. If I want to use it as yo form yo me olvido yo me olvido and it needs that little word okay. de it, it just does but me olvido me olvido we're just getting used to how do we pair up the reflexive pronoun with the conjugation of the verb oh we are how do, oh we are wrong equivocarse means to make a mistake we are mistaken nos equivocam, uh, acamos. Eh, nos equivocamos, nos equivocamos. Boy, that's a long word, isn't it? Nos equivocamos. Wow, we got it wrong. Nos equivocamos. Uh, this will be used in the past, so I'll just say, because you guys, this is a very irregular verb in the past. Uh, se murió, se murió, he died. Se murió. That's how it okay. sounds in the past, because usually we use that in the past, right? The only way you hear this in present is like, ah, uh, ah, uh, um, él se muere, él se muere de, de sed, he's dying of thirst, you know, meaning that figurative, dying of thirst, dying of hunger, they use that with morir, say, yeah. Me muero de hambre, I'm dying of hunger, meaning I'm just super hungry. Me muero de sed, I am dying of thirst, meaning I got to have a drink and I want it now, right? That's all. But you might hear morirse used in that way. Okay, quejarse means to complain about. Ooh, como se, ah, let's conjugate it for el, el. Ooh, and I need to get my uh, keyboard back here. Ah, el, el. He's complaining. Queja. Uh, queja is right. I need a little queja. pronoun in front of it. Se queja. Se queja. El se queja. El se queja. Okay. Bien. Vale. Graduarse. I don't really graduate myself, but that verb is just reflexive. So get used to it. The young man, he is graduating. How do we conjugate that to say he is graduating? El joven. Um, say. Grad, gradua. Gradua. And that gradua. needs a little accent mark. I don't expect you to. El joven se gradua. El graduarse es reflexivo. El joven se gradúa. Sí, 
Los niños, callarse. The kids are being quiet. Callarse, to be quiet, is reflexive. It just is. We make ourselves quiet. Literally. Yeah. ¿Cómo se dice? Los niños. Se callan. Se callan. Callarse becomes callan, but we need a se in front of it to say they are quiet. Se callan. ¿Sí? When we want to express the idea of, I wonder, do you wonder, they wonder about, it is reflexive, preguntarse. Huh. Because literally, when you say you wonder, you are asking yourself a question and you're thinking about it just up here, right? So, como se dice, how would we say to wonder about and change this into a yo form? Me pregunto. Me pregunto. It becomes me pregunto. Me pregunto. Okay, vale. Oh, fall in love is reflexive. He's falling in love with her. El hombre. El se. Enamora. Enamora. Se enamora. Okay, we take enamorar and the conjugation is just enamora. Se enamora. That verb Marilyn, fall in love it, with is reflexive. Si, bien, Larry. If you said se enamoran, that would be they fall in love with each other. Muy bien. Let's say I want to talk about the two of them. Oh, let's change it from el hombre. And we're going to say los dos. The two of them. The two of them. Now it's a couple. It's a couple of people, right? Bien. So now it is two of them and they're falling in love with each other. This becomes that idea of uh, uh, reciprocal. Yeah, what we call reciprocal. See, se enamoran, se enamoran. They fall in love with each other. See, this is one of those reflexive verbs that is used in a reciprocal to each other, okay? And this verb, enamorarse, fall in love with each other, can become like the verb for say hi, which is saludar, saludarse. So, okay, por ejemplo, that idea of a verb being reflex, uh, reciprocal, when it's reflexive, reciprocal, meaning in English, we literally say to each other, pretty like they fall in love with each other and we might actually in English say the each other part uh, can also become reciprocal like this verb. Uh, se saludan. They greet each other or they say hi to each other. That's the verb saludarse. Saludarse comes from the same root that we use for this action in the military. Salute. Except we've got a T in it. They've got a D in it. Saludarse. Saludarse means to greet, to say hi to. Okay? So se saludan, they say hi to each other or they greet each other. Se enamoran, they fall in love with each other. Reflexive verbs sometimes can have that idea of it's a reciprocal to each other action. Okay? Sometimes Reflexive verbs are not reciprocal. Sometimes they are very much just talking about what one person does. And this is the idea of ponerse roja. Ponerse roja means to blush. And literally it becomes, you to put blush. yourself red. Mm -hmm. You make yourself red, meaning this red. part of your face, yeah, this part of your face gets all rosy, rosy and hot. And, 
I pongo. Yeah, you're embarrassed. You're embarrassed, right? So uh, if I want to say she is turning red, literally, she is blushing, it becomes ella se pone roja. Roja, se pone roja. That's that's the term blush. Yeah. Uh, yeah, se pone roja. Se pone roja means somebody, literally, their face is turning red because they're blushing. Yeah. Okay. So reflexive verbs have lots of jobs, right? Reflexive verbs can be reciprocal, like enamorarse or saludarse. They can mean just doing it to yourself. I make myself quiet. I literally shut up or these kids are shutting up. They're being quiet, right? Uh, it can be a reaction somebody has like ponerse roja or ponerse rojo if you're a guy, right? Because she's a female is ponerse roja, se pone roja, bien? Okay, bien? Ah, here's a reciprocal. They look like, they look alike. They look like each other. La mamá y su hija. What do I do with this verb parecerse? Se parecen. Oh. Se parecen. Here is the conjugation parecen. But if they look like each other, they look alike because they're mother and daughter. It's se parecen. Se parecen. They look alike. They look like each other. Okay. Uh, uh, me parezco a mi mamá. I look like my mom. Me parezco a mi mamá. Mm. Okay. Mis hijos se parecen a mi esposo. My kids look like my husband. Mis hijos se parecen. They look like a mi esposo. They look like their dad. Okay. okay. This verb here happens to be a reflexive. When you go nuts, you go crazy. Yeah. Not in a psychiatric word. Well, it could be, but probably not. Right. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm crazy. He yelled at me and I, you know, he, he yelled at her and she went crazy. Okay. We're just talking about this gal. And we want to say, oh, she's going nuts. She's pulling her hair out of her, yeah, out of her uh, head here. Se vuelve loca. Se vuelve loca. Se vuelve loca. Mm hmm so volver is to return, right? But volver. when it's volverse, that volverse is it. more like become. Volverse okay. can also mean to turn around. Volverse can be, this one's a little complicated, can be literally this, right? To turn in the opposite direction. Se vuelve, turn around. Meaning you take your whole body and you flip it to the other position like behind you. Yeah. So with, with no other descriptor, se vuelve means that person turned around. They did this. Yeah. Uh, but with an adjective like loca, went nuts. <laughs> yeah. See? Uh, yeah. Oh, and I've got a. Let's look at this one. To get sick. Enfermarse. Enfermarse. Literally not really meaning you make yourself sick, but you get sick. Some reflexive verbs have this idea of get. Like, you know. Uh, get a little nutty, like this lady. Get sick. Okay. ¿Cómo se dice? Uh, oh, she's getting sick. ¿Ella? 
se enferma. Se enferma. Se enferma. Is it all, is enfermarse, is it always reflexive? Is, enferma. is enfermar always um, reflexive? It is usually reflexive. Okay. Uh, uh, I could, for example, like if a food makes me sick, you know, uh, um, it could be used non-reflexively, but that wouldn't be the usual thing. Most of the time when we use it, it's, this is the the 99% of the time, it'll be reflexive. See, okay. Uh, okay. A ver. Here's a... Uh, here is a reflexive. Ooh, I need to get my. Here's a reflexive that goes to that reciprocal idea. Llevarse bien. Get along well. Llevarse bien means to get along well. It could be llevarse mal, get along badly. <laughs> if you have kids that don't get along, okay? So how do we change this to say, oh, these girls, they get along well. Se llevan? Se llevan bien. Se llevan bien. Se llevan bien. They get along well. And you can flip the bien to the word mal if kids don't get along, <laughs> yeah? Or you don't get along with your neighbor, or you don't get along with somebody in your family, right? Uh, se llevan bien. Okay, vale. So this one's a reciprocal. This one's kind of a reciprocal with each other. And these two are becomes. So reflexives can carry with them different kinds of meeting, meanings, not just the get up and sit down, uh, uh, levantarse and sentarse, yeah? The daily routine reflexives. Reflexives can carry many different meanings. And again, you kind of know from the context of the sentence. Ah, here's one you had in the video, putting on clothing, not trying on, but putting on, literally putting it on when you get ready in the morning. So this is more the daily routine thing, yeah? This is a reflexive used as a daily routine. Ponerse los calcetines, putting on your socks. ¿Cómo se dice? He's putting on his socks. Él? Él se pone? Se pone. Se pone los calcetines. Se pone los calcetines, ¿sí? Se pone. Yeah, se pone. Put on. Meaning uh -huh. you literally put it on your body. This is used for clothing, ponerse, right? You had ponerse with roja, meaning blush. But then we were combining it with the idea of red, meaning your face is turning a color, right? Here we're talking about taking this clothing item and literally putting it on your body. And that's the ponerse that you hear a lot, see? ¿sí? Uh, se pone los calcetines, bien? Irse, oddly, is reflexive. But wait, how can you go yourself? Well, you don't. Irse is just used. Ir is used as a reflexive, and it's used a lot as a reflexive to say this, to go away. In English, we have to insert that idea of away. Well, we have to put in the idea away with that word. And to convey that idea in Spanish, you make ir reflexive. Irse. Uh, uh, if somebody grabs their coat and they wave at the person in the office, yeah? And they say, me voy, me voy. It means I'm leaving. I'm, yeah, I, exa exacto, Lisa. See, I'm out of here. I'm gone. This action, I'm out of here. I'm going. 
right now. I'm taking off. I'm taking off. Me voy. So you're done with your luncheon or your dinner. You really have to get out. And you sit in front. Ah, bueno, gracias. Me voy. I'm leaving, right? Uh, it means go away or leave. And usually we use it by itself. Usually we use it, uh, uh, the me voy. Uh, generally, I'm just separating my things here so that we don't get them confused. Usually we usually just say me voy without a place, without talking about what place. Yeah. Usually it's just together. It, people might say the uh, uh, me, me voy a la oficina. I'm going to, I'm, I'm off for the office. Okay. Maybe. But usually it's just me voy. Se van. They're leaving. They're, they're out of here. Se van. Yeah. Uh, bueno. Okay. And then here was our original use for reflexive, meaning you're actually doing something to your whole body, right? Levantarse, sentarse. Si? Bien? Okay. Vale? Uh, so uh, I'll send you the little link to that and make sure you've got all the, the little conjugations so that you see them. So reflexives can have multiple meanings. You know, we introduced them as a first step as I do an action and I do it to myself, right? Like me siento or me levanto. But very frequently reflexives can carry different kinds of meanings. They can be reciprocal. Uh, they can talk about changes in state. They can do many different things. Uh, para que sepan, just so that you know. Um, and what's the takeaway? The takeaway is that you just have to get comfortable. If you hear people using a verb as a reflexive, yeah, they're either talking about their daily routine or something they do to each other. Or it's got a special meaning like go away, leave, take off, uh, like dormirse, fall asleep. You don't sleep yourself. Dormirse is fall asleep. But we have that idea of fall in English. So reflexives do a lot of different jobs, wear a lot of different hats uh, in Spanish. See? ¿Sí? Bien? Vale? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I want to uh, set up uh, an idea for you to come into class next week. And this will require you to do a little bit of thinking, uh, a little bit of thinking about yourself, about how you want to talk about yourself. And you may need to use dictionary, maybe, quizás, maybe, quizás, bien. Uh, I want to kind of preview this with you and you'll see the subtitles. But uh, what I'm going to want you to do for next week is to talk about uh, yourself. <clears throat> and there was a longer video with this that I actually got this idea from. It asks you to describe yourself in three words. And I think I am gonna ask you guys to do this, even though this particular video doesn't say limit yourself to three words. Uh, but the original video, which was a more complicated one was describe yourself in three words. Ooh. Um, and you might use said you might talk about actual actions you do in the course of a day you've got a lot of leeway here uh but um i want to check this video out with you so we have an idea of what is expected and this is physical description and personality both so you can you can do any kind of description about yourself, or you may choose to describe somebody who is a friend or somebody in your family group. You can kind of use this any way, but we want to bring in some descriptions. So, uh, let's see. Se dice Spanish. El día de hoy estamos en la Ciudad de México, en el Parque México, y vamos a hablar con la gente acerca de ellos mismos. We're going to oh, talk about 
people themselves. You know this word mismo as the same, but ellos mismos means themselves. Okay. And it's going to be descriptions. People are going to describe themselves. De cómo son, de cómo se perciben ellos. Así que, ¿por qué no nos acompañan a ver qué nos encontramos el día de hoy? El día de hoy estamos platicando con la gente acerca de ellos mismos. Okay. <laughs> Entonces, ¿te puedes escribir a ti? Ah, te puedes escribir. Can you describe yourself? That te is the yourself. Te puedes describir. I back it up just a little. Ooh, te puedes describir. Can you describe yourself? Not describe the park, not describe your town, not describe your house. Can you describe yourself? We're asking people to talk about themselves. ¿Te puedes describir a ti misma físicamente? Mm -hmm. Oh, físicamente. And she's starting with the physical part, okay? Físicamente soy una chica de cabello castaño largo. Uh, tengo ojos grandes y sonrisa grande. Tengo nariz pequeña. And notice when people talk about the eyes they have, they often use tener. Yeah, we don't use soy. I am brown eyed. <laughs> Tengo los ojos. And you'll talk about the color. And you'll hear that come up again. She's talking about the size of her nose. And you're going to hear this word promedio a lot. Promedio is average. That's just the word for average. Meaning, yeah, in the middle, yeah. Uh, soy complexión promedio. Mm -hmm. es, um, ¿Qué más? Describirme físicamente. Altura, ojo. Oh, height, eyes, hair. She, physically, height, eyes, hair. Os, cabello. Pues mido alrededor de unos 75. And he, mido, I measure. We say, I am six feet tall, right? Uh, and of course, they use metros. But uh, mido, mido, I measure. He's talking about his height. And we don't use the am verb. We don't use soy or estoy. We don't, certainly not estoy, but we don't use soy to talk about height. Mido, I measure. I measure, and then you give your height. And this alrededor just means around, about. Mis ojos son claros, cabello ondulado. Eh, Tiene. Quizá un poquito un bigote. A little bit of a mustache. <laughs> este, como... No. And, and these are all positive. Este, como, he's thinking. What do I want to say about myself? Those are just pause words. Este, como, um. Those are the words for um that are commonly used. Some words for um. Este, como. So you'll hear people pausing and thinking about what do I want to say? And when they're pausing and thinking, it's este, como. Los tres o cuatro kilos por encima de mi peso ideal. Creo que soy muy promedio, altura promedio, cuerpo promedio. <laughs> Voy a ver que el cabello. Ah, ok. Tengo el pelo naranja y los ojos color miel. Tengo pecas y pestañas largas. <laughs> Perfecto. Y bueno, en este momento, con pancita. Porque... Pancita means a little tummy. <laughs> Panza, P-A-N-Z-A, is a, a kind of a colloquial, affectionate way of saying stomach, tummy. Yeah, we would say tummy in English. And pancita means uh, I got a little tummy going here. Estoy embarazada. <laughs> oh, because she's pregnant. Pancita. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a, I got a little tummy because I'm pregnant. Ah, felicidad. Delgada, bajita, este, pelo largo, lacio, y de tez blanca. Uh, pues no sé, tengo estatura promedio, tal vez. Um, moreno. Uh... Morena, brown skin. So moreno is used for uh, a tanner color of skin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and moreno also is a word for brunette, frequently used for brunette. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
brownish or blackish hair and uh, uh, you know, a little more tanned looking skin would be considered moreno. Okay, moreno. Um, uh, ¿Qué más? Veamos. Oh, pues uh, ojo, las, digo, ojo. <laughs> cabello <laughs> negro, un poco lacio. Bueno, ahorita lo tengo largo. Uh -huh. uh, mis ojos creo que son color café, pero... And color café, brown. In Mexico, they favor this word café for brown. Uh, de color café, brown colored eyes. Estos se ven negros. Uh, mi ceja es muy poblada. Oh, momento. Es... Uh, let me back up just a little bit. He used an interesting reflexive there. Lo tengo largo. Uh -huh. uh, mis ojos. Pero a ese se ven negros. Sometimes they look black. Uh. When, when you look tall, you look uh. pretty, you look skinny. You look tired. You look great. He's saying they look black. Se ven negros. Here's a reflexive. Ver yeah. means to see. Verse means to look a certain way. There's a different way of using a, a verb in a reflexive form. Verse is super common when people say somebody looks a certain way. Ooh, te ves muy bien. You look really good. Te ves muy bien. Te ves muy delgada, chica. Wow, girl, you look really thin. Te ves muy delgada. You look thin. Ah, pero a veces se ven negro. Sometimes they look black. He's talking about his eye color. Creo que son color café, pero a veces se ven negros. Uh, mi ceja es muy poblada. Este, y pues, uso lentes. <laughs> Perfecto. Y Jocelyn, pues yo tengo, no, estoy, estoy bajita de estatura. And notice a lot of women describe themselves as bajita when they mean short. They don't just use baja. A lot of times they use bajita. It's kind of an affectionate way, bajita. I'm, I'm a tiny thing. I'm petite. Think of bajita as petite. Yes. Bajita. Es igual morena, eh, pues ojos igual cafés, café fuerte. And there are two words for skin. Tes can mean skin, piel, P-I-E-L, piel, also means skin. So you may hear either one used. Uh, tes or piel both mean skin. They're just interchangeably used. Tengo el pelo muy ondulado, pero ahorita lo traigo planchado. Ah, okay. <laughs> y... ¿Qué otra cosa? No sé, tus brackets. Oh, <laughs> mis brackets. Tienes brackets. Ah, tengo brackets. Perfecto. <laughs> Interesting words for braces there, yeah, brackets, okay. Pues que soy bajo, delgado, tengo barba. <laughs> eh, Color de tu piel, cabello. Eh, pelo negro, eh, piel, pues... Como blanca, pero bronceada, qué sé yo. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, eh, bronceada, tan. Tengo gafas, <laughs> no sé, mala vista. Oye, y ahora te puedes describir, bueno, puedes describir tu personalidad. Sí. Ah, so now we're getting into personality. So you may want to use these next week. Soy una chica um, que trata de ser siempre optimista. Soy muy empática, me gusta estar con la gente, aunque... And notice this, she's describing herself, but she's not using soy here. Me gusta estar con la gente. I like being with people. So you may, in your descriptions, use verbs to talk about things that you like. Okay, vale. A veces me cuesta un poco de trabajo por un poco de ansiedad social. Um, <laughs> me gusta mucho compartir, me gusta mucho escuchar. Uh, soy una persona muy sensible. Ah, oh, I'm a very... Sensible. Y muy apasionada por lo que ama hacer, que son las artes. Y me gusta mucho escribir, leer, cantar, actuar. So, a lot of times when we talk about our personality, we want to talk about things that we generally do. You know, not just feliz or triste or uh, uh, simpático, but things we like to do can be used to describe ourselves. Y creo que básicamente. Mi personalidad, pues soy una persona creativa, soy una persona que me gusta estar cambiando constantemente, necesito estar siempre en acción, en movimiento, necesito estar eh, moviéndome por la vida. Okay. ok, soy más bien tímida. Ah, 
And that word timida is shy. Timida. Timida, we think of as timid. And really the idea there is shy. I guess that kind of connects with timid. So yeah. Eh, tengo muchos amigos y soy muy sensible, artista. Creativa. Creativa, ajá. Podría ser atento, amable y respetuoso. Extrovertida, pero a veces un poco seria. Eh, divertida, social. Eh, and notice, if you're a lady describing yourself next week, keep those descriptions. If you use adjectives, keep the description words feminine, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Soy alta, I am tall. Uh, you can't just be thinking alto if you're talking about yourself and you're a female, okay? So this is something that uh, ladies in the group Often we forget that if we're talking about ourselves, you've got to use a feminine adjective to talk about yourself. If you're a guy, of course, it's easy. You just use the masculine uh, 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 description. A veces también me gusta pasar mucho tiempo sola. And here she, oh, she got a so ah, I like to spend a lot of time alone. Here came the alone word. Mucho tiempo sola. I like to be alone. Spend time. Pasar mucho tiempo. Spend a lot of time sola, alone, by myself. Right? And solamente would not make sense because she's talking about a description of herself. Sola. Alone. Okay. Sí, soy eh, bastante ordenada. Ordenada. Organized. Y... Creo que ya. Y, Creo que ya, and that's it. <laughs> y mi personalidad, pues soy una persona de carácter fuerte, y, um, independiente, um, solitaria, no soy así como que muy amigable, um, pues nada más. A veces soy sarcástico. Um, I, I, I am sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> ah, a veces me trago al hablar. <laughs> sí, puedo ser eh, muy abierto en ocasiones, en otras ocasiones puedo ser más eh, cerrado, pero en general la gente me describe como alguien espontáneo. And the word abierto is often used. Abierto means open, uh, meaning um, you're open and friendly with people. Cerrado would mean more uh, keeping to yourself. Cerrado, closed, uh, would mean somebody keeps to themselves. You know, they're kind of quiet and they're not super loud. And they don't display emotion a lot. Cerrado, right? Abierto, very open, uh, display how you feel freely. Eh, con carisma. Eh, um... ¿Qué puedo decir? Pues tengo una personalidad creativa, de hecho soy artista, me dedico a dibujar, pintar y ese tipo de cosas, entonces tengo una sensibilidad para ese espectro de, de cosas. Pues yo creo que soy una persona, no sé, tal vez extrovertida, um, igual amable y pues ya, yeah, <ríe> creo. Oye, y de esto de lo físico y de la personalidad, ¿qué es lo que más te gusta de ti misma? Físicamente serían mis ojos, mis ojos y mi sonrisa sería lo que más. Y de personalidad, uh, yo creo que la empatía y la sensibilidad. Perfecto. Y de estas cosas, o sea, de tu personalidad y de lo físico, ¿qué es lo que más te gusta de ti? Pues lo que más me gusta de mí yo creo que es eh, mi tenacidad. Pues que siempre soy muy aferrado cuando quiero algo. <risa> Me gusta ir por las cosas hasta conseguirlas. Perfecto. Creo que el tema de lo artístico, mi imaginación y la creatividad. Qué padre. ¿A qué te dedicas? Soy artista. And, and no, ¿a qué te dedicas? What do you dedicate yourself to? Here's another reflexive. Yay, dedicarse is used to talk about what you do uh, generally as a profession, as a job. Ah, ¿A qué te dedicas? asks, what do you do for a living? 
And she answers not with me dedico. Uh, she could say me dedico al arte. I dedicate myself to art, meaning I do art as a job. Me dedico al arte. She could. But she switches over into just soy and her profession. Soy artista plástica. Soy artista plástica. I'm an artist. Artista plástica, pinto. Qué bonito. Oye, María, ¿de dónde eres? De Uruguay. Perfecto. Ah, pues yo diría que mis ojos, tal vez, y mi pelo cuando está corto. Ajá. Pero ahorita no. Ok. ¿Y a ti, Jocelyn? ¿Físicamente? Como sea. Pues físicamente, no sé. Ah. <risa> eh, yo creo que mi, tal vez mi test, aunque me hubiera gustado ser un poco más morenita. Y pues este de personalidad, yo creo que soy una persona extrovertida. Tal vez eso es lo que más me agrada. Y por ejemplo, ¿tú qué valoras más? De la demás gente, los rasgos físicos o los rasgos internos, digamos. Eh, no, obviamente los internos. <risa> bueno, Cintia, y para terminar, nos gustaría que nos contaras para ti qué es lo más valioso de, en una persona. Ok, está, está cañón. <risa> Yo creo que lo más valioso en una persona es como esta cualidad humana, ¿a qué me refiero con la cualidad humana? A como este cúmulo de empatía, de ser amables, de, de buscar ayudar a los demás, de buscar aportar a algo, a algo en el mundo. Eh, soy muy de la idea de que sin pasión para mí las cosas no sirven y por ende sin amor. Entonces creo que lo más importante de cualidad humana sería como justo esto, como el cúmulo de cosas que a cada uno nos hacen ser más humanos cada día. Los valores ¿no? inculcados por, por la familia, manera de ser, el respeto hacia las demás personas. Yo creo que la honestidad, porque pues, <ríe> eh, pues la gente honesta normalmente siempre es la más agradable en mi opinión, porque pues no son falsos, por así decirlo. Yeah. <ríe> okay, and we're gonna stop it there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a little framework, yeah, um, to talk about yourselves next week, and I want you to really spend some time talking about yourself, or if you're uncomfortable talking about yourself, uh, talk about somebody who is a close friend, or whatever, but name who that person is. And I'm going to give you a framework so that you think about what kinds of verbs you might be able to use. And, and I'm going to ask you to watch that whole video one more time, and uh, stop it at certain points to really kind of absorb how they're using certain ideas, but I'll give you certain verbs you might want to use, but then you're going to have to come up with the descriptive part of it to talk about yourself or that other person, okay? Um, so that'll take a little bit of thought. Uh, and I think that is the only video I'm going to give you for this week, unless I find something just super fun. There might be a super fun video that I might add on to that. Uh, just for listening, that's game-like, because I think there was one that just came out, but I have to preview it yet. Okay, bien? Todo bien? All good? And you might use regular verbs, you might use some reflexives, but I'll give you that framework in uh, uh, a little Google slide set that you can use to uh, frame your descriptions for next week. And next week, besides describing yourself, we're going to start off with describing yourself, but then we're going to take some pictures of people and we're going to see if you can apply that to talk about other people you know you get to plan the part about yourself but uh we might uh uh you might need to work a little more uh well you know what mm, i'll give you some some pictures of people to think about so you can think about it ahead of time because sometimes you need to look up a few words here and there um and so maybe that's a little bit better planned out ¿Ok? ¿Bien? Bien. Perfecto. Muy bien. Uh, assignment for the week. And uh, nos vemos. We'll see you next week. With <laughs> talking about yeah, yourselves and other people. Ok. Bye. Gracias. Gracias. Sí, Gracias. sí. De nada, de nada. Fue un placer. Was a pleasure.